Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to talk about the lasso tool. So our previous video, we just talked about the standard select, uh, which is, you know, works pretty much the same way it does on SketchUp for desktop or SketchUp Pro. Uh, Lasso can the same thing can be said, but because of the interface, because you're working with a stylus or your finger on the screen, uh, there's definitely some advantages for using Lasso. In fact, I would go so far as to say that Lasso Select may end up being my default select tool. Now, there's a couple of them in using SketchUp for iPad. I will explain why right now. Okay, so I'm in the tool right now. So I'm already in Lasso Select right here. You can see that. Uh, like a lot of the other tools, it does come up with a submenu. So I have options here. We'll cover what each of those means in just one second. What I wanted to show is when you're in Lasso, uh, you can use it a couple different ways. One is to just tap, right? So if I just tap, it acts very much like a regular select and just highlights the thing that I'm tapping on. That's great because it, you don't have to go to a separate command to just do regular picking of things. I can actually do it right here with Lasso. Of course, the advantage using Lasso is the fact that you can draw shapes and then the things that fall inside those shapes get selected. This is what I was saying. This lends itself very well to this input, using the pencil uh, input. I do want to point out that this tool does act the same whether you are in just draw mode or click move, click move mode. So regardless, if I come up here, regardless of which one, just draw, click, move, click, this does function the same. So depending on which one you prefer, the pencil is going to act the same. So the big part of using lasso, of course, is that, that shape you draw to select things. Now there is something to that. The direction you draw, whether you go counterclockwise or clockwise, is going to change how the select works. So as I draw this way, I'm going to go counterclockwise first. You can see I'm I'm gonna let's lap over some stuff over here, boom. All right, see that? See anything that that's that window that that bubble I just created, that shape I created, anything it crossed over got selected. So here I have these little chunks. This is all loose geometry, but you can see where I just crossed over the sides, they got selected. Now let's do something. Let's do something different. Let's go clockwise and do something uh, similar. Let's go like this. All right. Anything that gets selected when you go clockwise, only the items that fall completely within the final shape get highlighted. So you can see some of the stuff that I crossed over here didn't get picked up because they didn't fall inside of the shape. How can you tell the difference? How do you remember which one's which? Well, there's, there's an indicator on the screen as well. See as I'm drawing along, see the line that is connecting my location of my pencil back to the beginning? See how it's dashed? That is a crossing selection. So that's the one, anything that gets crossed by this, so this point, boom, like that, all that stuff gets selected because I have a crossing selection. That's what that dotted line indicates. If I go the other direction, so you have a solid line connecting back to the beginning, that is a select bubble or a select shape, a select lasso, where only things that fall completely inside will get picked up. So if I come over like this, uh, like that. None of those pieces I crossed over get selected because I was going clockwise. Now, again, like I said, this is all loose geometry, so the individual pieces are being selected as I do this. If I come over to the right side, I do have options of turning on modifiers. So I can turn on plus, and what that's going to do is everything I select gets added to the current selection. Below that, of course, is minus, and the opposite's true anything that is selected gets removed from the current selection. If I select something with minus that's not already selected, nothing happens. Just like with if plus, if I come in here and select something that's already selected, I can't select it more. I can't select again. So that only removes selected or adds unselected. The third option though, inverse or add slash remove, will change whatever is selected. So if I go in here and select something that's already selected, it turns off. If I select something that's turned off, it'll get turned on. It'll get added to the selection. So inverse switches. So if I come here and go like this and grab these two, look, they swap. See that? Um, so interesting thing there. And then of course the option, the bottom here is deselect. If I click that, everything's turned off. 
Now, I, some of you are probably already catching when I do this, I get a little menu at the bottom. We'll actually be covering that menu in depth in the next video. So come back next week if you're interested in how everything that you can do through this menu. This is basically the context menu on SketchUp for iPad. Awesome tools in there. We'll cover that next week. The other thing I want to touch on right now is we did talk about the pencil and we said use this, this function works the same in either pencil mode. But of course, this is SketchUp for iPad. We got options. So I can do the same thing. I can actually do a select with the lasso with my finger, but there is one thing you have to watch for. So if I just come in here and try to start drawing, you see how it's going to spin around? Because that's what SketchUp for iPad does. As soon as you tap the screen and start moving your finger, it's going to assume you want to orbit. To do a lasso select, I have to press and do a hard press to get that lasso to come up. Everything else works exactly the same. The modifier keys, the, the clockwise versus counterclockwise, but you just have to make sure you do the hard press to first to start it, and then you can do your selections. Very similarly, mouse, when I bring a mouse in here, it's gonna work exactly the same. Drag counterclockwise, drag clockwise, and modifier keys work the same with the mouse. Very simple, very easy to do. Um, of course, the issue I run into with mouse is the control I have on this versus coming through and actually moving my finger or my, my pencil exactly where I need it definitely leans itself more to uh, those methods of input, finger or pencil, than it does to the mouse. It is option, you do have the option to do it with the mouse as well. And that's everything I can think of as far as using Lasso on SketchUp for iPad. Like I said, if you've watched the last two videos, the regular select where you can drag to create the square select window still works awesome. It's great. But just because of the, the interface, the fact that you can go through and real easily draw those freehand shapes, uh, Lasso kind of lends itself to this specific uh, method, I guess, is what you'd say. Method of input? I don't know. Input tool? I don't know, whatever you want to call it, the thing that you do with the thing. Let's quit there. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment. What do you think of Lasso Select on SketchUp for iPad? Which one do you prefer? We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.